Greetings. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about something that I've seen uh, mentioned fairly often in comments and I've brought it up at least peripherally in my videos and I believe Barbara says as well and uh, something I wanted to talk about in greater depth. Now this is unscripted but most of my videos are unscripted but hopefully I can stay on topic and be pretty focused in this discussion. The name of the game is simply the question as to whether or not females in their mate selection preferences are optimized for modernity. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean quite simply that we human beings, both males and females, are running on hard hardwire that harks back to, you know, if we're lucky, the late Pleistocene. So uh, basically, millennial-old hardwire, our mental instincts, our physiology, and so on and so forth. We're all uh, sort of relics of the past, even though we live in the present, or the future, as it were technically speaking. And because of that, most of our instincts on, on so many visceral levels are tied into that time, that prehistoric time, and it's particularly true of our uh, instincts with regards to uh, mate selection. Now, I've been meaning to talk about this for a while, but the thing that spurred me on to actually make this video was a neat little article which unfortunately uh, doesn't contain that much information by a uh, scientist who uh, has published a paper um, sent from Stanford University in Trends in Genetics. I tried to look at the abstract, there's not much material there, but I will read off the article, it's quite short, and then discuss it and then talk about what I want to talk about specifically with respect to that article. So the title of the article, and of course I'll post the link, is Human Beings Are Getting Dumber, says study. And just look at all the amazing innovations modern technology has given us. At home, uh, HIV tests, motion action, motion activated screwdrivers, and self-inflating tires. It's easy to look down on our prehistoric ancestors for their primitive, electric screwdriverless way of life. But one scientist says we shouldn't be so quick to, ju quick to judge. In a two-part paper published in the journal Trends in Genetics, Stanford University researcher Gerald Crabtree suggests that evolution is, in fact, making us dumber, and that human intelligence may have actually peaked before our hunter-gatherer predecessors left Africa. The reason? Life on the veld was tough, and prehistoric human genes were constantly sub subjected to selective pressure in an environment where the species' survival depended on it. For humans, that meant getting smarter. Quote, the development of our intellectual abilities and the optimization of thousands of intelligence genes probably occurred in relatively nonverbal dispersed groups of people before our ancestors emerged from Africa, end quote, Crabtree, Crabtree says in the new release. The urbanization that followed the development of agriculture simplified survival by removing some of its challenges which likely weakened natural selection's ability to eliminate mutations associ associated with uh, deficiencies in intelligence. Crabtree estimates that over the last 3,000 years, about 120 generations, humans have sustained at least two mutations that have eroded our intellectual and emotional intelligence. Quote, A hunter-gatherer who did not correctly conceive a solution to providing food or shelter probably died along with his or her progeny, whereas a modern Wall Street executive that made a similar conceptual mistake would receive a substantial bonus and be a more attractive mate, end quote, Crabtree wrote in the paper. He also noted that the average Athenian from 1000 BC would rank uh, among the smartest and emotionally stable in today's society. Not everyone agrees with Crabtree's reasoning, however. Steve Jones, a geneticist at the University College London, believes there is insufficient data to support this theory. Quote, never mind the hypothesis, give me the data, and there aren't any, end quote, Jones told The Independent. I could just, could just as well argue that mutations have reduced our aggression, our depression, and our penis length, but no journal would publish that. Why do they publish this? Hmm. Crabtree does argue that no matter how deteriorate our intellectual abilities may have become over the millennia, advancements in technology will someday render these changes insignificant. Quote, I think we will know each other, each of the millions of human mutations that can compromise our intellectual function and how each of these mutations interact with each other and other processes as well as environmental influences, end quote, Crabtree said in the release. 
At that time, we may be able to magically correct any mutation that has occurred in all cells of any organism at any developmental stage. Thus, the brutish process of natural selection will be unnecessary." Unquote. So, that's the article, uh, and I'll post the link as well as the link to the abstract, although uh, it's not much material there. There's a, I mean, there's, this is food for thought at, at its base. This is not, uh, like I said, there, obviously it's disputed. He apparently doesn't have a lot of data to support this. I don't know. I can't. I want. I would like to read the study, but I don't have access to it. So I, I will limit myself to my own speculation in this regard. So the question I want to ask, as I said, pose: Are women selecting their mates in optimal fashion with regards to modernity? in light of the fact that our hardware is thousands, if not millions of years old? I am going to argue uh, no. I'll give you an example. Your average woman, most women, would be very attracted to a extremely well-paid athlete of uh, great recognition and fame, uh, David Beckham, for example, or a Michael Jordan, or what have you. And there's no doubt that they're very talented in their respective fields, the, in their respective athletic fields. But the question is, all these football players or basketball players or even tennis players, they are contributing to the entertainment of many human beings. But in, in a very modest way, are they in fact contributing to the advancement of humanity? What would contribute to the advancement of humanity? Well, I think it's easy to say and easy to claim, and I don't think it can be refuted, that s humanity on the whole would benefit if more human beings across the board were more intelligent. Now, let's assume, for the sake of argument, that what this paper claims and what the gentleman, uh, the scientist, the geneticist, is claiming is true. Well, we're seeing a deterioration of intelligence. Now, it is before I proceed, let me mention that it's not just women's choices, it's also men's choices, and uh, it also has a lot to do with the technology, which I, I will talk about uh, briefly later. But yes, a woman, of course, would be uh, most interested in uh, that kind of guy, high status, uh, quote-unquote attractive, uh, good build, lots of money, so on and so forth. Uh, he, at least in conventional evolutionary terms would be a good mate, a good protector, and a good provider, allegedly. But he might not be contributing the IQ genes uh, to the pro his progeny and the sa same female uh, by the same token. And let me uh, now castigate men. Yes, I'm castigating myself as well for our mate selection preferences. We, we always seek fecundity in females. We like the the, the hip bust ratio, uh, relatively slim women, large breasts, uh, shapely curves, uh, neotenous facial features, uh, youthful, and so on and so forth. Uh, however, uh, it's very rare that such women uh, bear great degrees of intelligence. It's extremely rare, in fact. So the combination of, say, a, a David Beckham, who is a quote-unquote alpha male, and a... Uh, Kate Beckham, his wife, I think, believe that's what her name is, uh, um, I apologize if I'm not getting her name right, who, at least in her prime, was extremely attractive and so on and so forth. I mean, this is allegedly, uh, in terms, in purely evolutionary terms, a, an optimal mm -hmm. couple, yet uh, none of these uh, individuals are particularly intelligent. That's rather obvious. I mean, they're not making any groundbreaking discoveries. They're not contributing to science, intellectual thought or even art and poetry. They're, yeah. One's an athlete, one is a, a washed up uh, uh, grade B minus singer uh, who latched on to her husband's fame and uh, is still riding that wave. Where's the problem here? The problem is that if we want to advance as a species we need to take into account these things that uh, despite all of our, our, our visceral uh, instincts in our gut and in our in the you know the reptilian uh, hindbrain and so on and so forth that those are not the kinds of people that uh, will be most beneficial to advancing humanity. What kinds of people would be most beneficial? Well, certainly not I. I'm not. Uh, I'm reasonably intelligent, but I am certainly not of the caliber 
of uh, those who would uh, really can make contributions. Well, I look at history, and it's very revealing. Let's look at Isaac Newton and uh, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, both of whom, uh, both of whom uh, are credited uh, with uh, discovering uh, calculus. I mean, they, they both, I, it's safe to say they sort of simultaneously discovered calculus and its applications. These were men of just tremendous, tremendous intellectual capacity. Uh, as far as their personal lives were concerned, uh, Newton was notoriously scornful of women. He thought they were a needless distraction and they got in the way of his work. And Leibniz was, well, we know he never really settled down. He was never married. He was a bachelor his entire life. Not much more is mo known in that regard about him. So these are the kinds of men who were just ruthlessly devoted to their intellectual pursuits and didn't really have very much time for the whole mating game. Uh, it, it seems men of that kind of caliber uh, don't, <laughs> generally don't, l on some level, lose their interest in women because, they're, they're because their minds are able to comprehend reality on a far greater level and they're able to get results from that. Uh, even if we just talk about artistic mastery, look at some of the great masters of the Renaissance, and I'm not talking about the postmodern muck uh, mire that we're in today, but guys like my, uh, Michelangelo or uh, Da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo was almost certainly gay. Da Vinci is it's highly likely that he was gay. Of course, they didn't have any interest in women, yet I would argue those, those two gentlemen are perhaps the greatest, most skillful artists, painters, sculptors that have ever lived. Uh, again, not much interest in the mating game. In their case, they were gay. So you see sort of a recurrent pattern. It's not always true. You know, Einstein uh, married and mated and... Uh, Graham Bell did as well, and so on and so forth. But uh, there does seem to be an overwhelming tendency in the greatest minds of history uh, to, uh, to sort of spurn uh, that, uh, that path. And even somewhat lesser minds, David, the David, Hume, David Hume never, uh, never shacked up, and he uh, died a bachelor. And the list is go goes on and on. Um, I believe uh, Blaise Pascal was also a bachelor his entire life, although you don't quote me on that. So first, the, c the kinds of men that would rightly advance humanity are not the kinds of men, A, that women want, and B, those self-same men don't really have that much interest in women to begin with, it seems. Uh, they're somewhat uh, detached. Now. One issue I want to touch on is this issue of status vis-a-vis -vis, uh, wealth. Now, it is true that wealth is, of course, important, but I'm going to argue that having lots of money, even if you've earned it in a legitimate fashion, is not a one-to-one a -one, uh, match in terms of intelligence. It doesn't directly correlate with intelligence. I mean, some of, as I said, some of the... Uh, Leibniz was never particularly wealthy, and like I said, he's one of the greatest minds who ever lived. Uh, and so on and so forth. There's no direct correlation between high degrees of intelligence and uh, massive quantities of wealth. Sometimes that's true. I mean, look at Bill Gates. He's obviously extremely bright and was able to capitalize on it. But for those um, of the intellectual persuasion, say in the ab abstra abstract hard sciences view, of, uh, theoretical physics, for example, it's, it's unlikely that that's going to have a direct payoff, at least in the, in the lifetime of one individual. Uh, much more so, it's going to happen later down the line, with discoveries. I mean, uh, so much of our modern techno technology, the engineering, all of, uh, flight, all these things, can, can we can go back, we can trace a, a, an unbroken chain of, of, of highly skilled mathematicians, most, or, most of whom are men, uh, who discovered formulas and uh, streamline them and you know of course Newton Leibniz are there among them and so they, they don't they made no profit from it at least not directly so what I'm arguing here is the kinds of things that women want in a man aren't necessarily the kinds of things that are going to be best for a highly intelligent species the same token if we if we for the sake of argument assume that what this geneticist and at Stanford Stanford is claiming is true it's safe to say that uh, well, we're getting dumber. And I think 
part of that, of course, is to do with uh, women's screwy uh, mate selection preferences. But also our, our male mate selection preferences. Look, I, I am perfectly willing to censure myself and our fellow males. Yes, we, we want the so-called poon, but we want it from youthful, attractive uh, women, you know, large, uh, firm bust, you know, the, you know, the classic features. Uh, women who quite often have two-digit two IQs, that, of course, is not uh, particularly beneficial in terms of advancing the species, if we are to mate. Um, that's uh, perhaps an indication of health, but uh, at least on some visceral level. But if we actually could abstractly think about our prospects of the species, we and and move past our uh, reptilian hindbrain and our instincts, which are rooted in, uh, like millions of years ago, well, maybe we could engage in a mate selection process that was much more indicative of, of intelligence and, and people's ability to evaluate reality and think analytically and so on and so forth. Of course, it's not all just about male and female mate selection preferences, is it? Uh, the gentleman who published the article is, of course, correct. Uh, technology has streamlined life for us, made everything a lot easier, and it's great. Uh, you know, if we didn't have the internet, and if I didn't have audacity, I couldn't make these videos, presumably. But, in the same token, uh, we are no longer being challenged on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with coming up with small but innovative solutions. And it's no doubt, as he mentions, that those were the kinds of solutions, uh, overcoming small, minute uh, problems, barriers on a daily basis in order to optimize survival. We no, 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 no longer need that. So it's, it sounds quite logical and indeed rational to argue that it was on some level, at least in terms of our uh, innovative abilities, we've, uh, we've lost uh, a bit of our intelligence or some, some large degree of our intelligence. Uh, on the same token, uh, it seems that, as I'm saying, the, the, the trend of highly intelligent people not mating uh, it well let's look at the UK uh, now I lived in the UK for over three years and in that time and those of you who are from the UK know the UK you all know about chavs the UK has uh, one of the worst if not the worst uh, teen pregnancy uh, issues in uh, in all of Europe if you want to consider Great Britain part of Europe it was so bad uh, when I was living there that I remember they <laughs> they published, uh, I think they've since removed it, a uh, commercial of a, I believe it was a 15-year-old girl, at least it was depicted as such, giving birth in a playground at her school. Uh, so a far cry from the worries of so-called geriatric mothers, it, the, the burdens on the state, on the taxpayer, are just immense because of all these teenage mothers uh, with their uh, teenage men. Uh, it goes without saying that these people probably come from uh, blue-collar backgrounds for the most part, low education, and likely are not the most intelligent individuals on the planet. Um, but they sure can fuck, and they can pop out babies uh, pretty quickly. But this is what I'm talking about. Yes, they're mating, and they're procreating, and they, they're spawning their seed, but... Uh, how is that contributing to humanity in terms of its intellectual capabilities? How is that advancing us? Of course, there are always going to be extremely brilliant minds of, of the likes of a Newton or a Leibniz. Uh, unfortunately, in the artistic scenes, we don't really have too many uh, Da Vinci's or Michelangelo's anymore that are, that are going to push uh, forward progress and make progress and, and just set new, uh, new barometers uh, new standards for uh, technology and science and discovery, but I'm arguing that we could use a lot more of that. Um, I think it would be much more beneficial to humanity on the whole uh, for a lot of reasons. Well, one, uh, if you look at the track record of, uh, of organisms on this planet, 99% you know, of all species that have ever lived have at some point in time gone extinct. I don't see human beings uh, being exceptional in this regard. Now, uh, 
there are so many co possible causes of uh, extinction uh, through our species. You know, it could be internecine human conflict, uh, mistakes made with uh, powerful atomic weapons, and so on and so forth, um, something from space, asteroid. Uh, but let's assume that none of that happens. Uh, in the long run, yes, technology will continue to advance. But we, if we want to, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm talking about space colonization. The Earth will eventually become um, uninhabitable, and at that point in time, we're going to need the most brilliant of minds to come up with solutions. This sounds a bit science fiction, but uh, you know, take it, uh, take it as it may, as it is. It, that is something to consider in the long run, in the long run. But even in the short short-term long run, say in the next few centuries, uh, given the preponderance of teenage pregnancies, of, uh, well, the, f the politicized, feminized atmosphere we live in, it would be much more beneficial to the species if women were selecting for intelligent mates that are perhaps only middle class, but are doing uh, groundbreaking work in their respective fields than looking for the wealthiest, most quote-unquote attractive, high-status uh, male. Like, likewise, and censuring myself and other fellow males, as much as we we like uh, our young, uh, fecund uh, females, uh, it probably would be more beneficial, in tr in, in in the long run, to uh, mate with uh, well intelligent women. And there are actually intelligent women; there are just not as many of them as there are men, unfortunately. Uh, so. These are, this is just you know, food for thought. Uh, technology certainly has made things a lot easier. Uh, you know, I, I remember not but 25 years ago when I was young, if I wanted to find something out, I had to uh, resolve myself to uh, go to the library and uh, look for specific uh, titles and specific topics. I mean, that's how you used to do it. Uh, right now, libraries seem more like archaic uh, uh, sort of remembrances of the past than they are uh, real fonts of knowledge, even though they, they, rem they remain fonts of knowledge, but of course the, with the internet you have everything. But I, I find that in our need, in our well, obsession, in our linked in to the internet, we, we've kind of lost a degree of thoroughness, and I think that dovetails well with uh, what um, the geneticist is claiming. W that, innovative, that innovative spirit, that the, the thoroughness, the ability to, uh, to come up with solutions on your own. Um, you know, 50 years ago, if you were in a relatively isolated situation and you had some problem, maybe you needed to fix things or something, you would have to experiment on your own until you came up with something. If I have that issue, I can just Google it and find probably dozens of solutions. And whilst that makes my life really easy in a, in a certain regard and uh, simplifies things, I'm also not expending mental energy in an effort to, uh, to find a solution to that problem. Uh, it's, uh, it has its drawbacks, and I mean, its good sides and its bad sides and its drawbacks. That's certainly um, one of them. But yes, uh, in regards to both male and female mate selection preferences, I think uh, we, we probably would be better off if we were uh, choosing our mates uh, on a different basis than the uh, prescribed ones that we've come to know through our, uh, through our evolution and our instincts. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say on that topic. I did want to talk about this. I think, if anything, it's interesting food for thought. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, everyone take care and have a pleasant day or evening or afternoon, depending on your time zone. All the best.